It's better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Make sure you smash the like and subscribe buttons below. Uh, music provided by bensound.com. My name is John Purcell. So how do you focus on being a Christian artist in a broken world? You can find more content on this topic as you follow the creation of the comic book My Walk at 3otters.blogspot.com I'm 51 years old and I'm just now discovering that I need to stop goofing around and hone in on my craft. And as I pick up my pencil to work on this comic, I'm seeing how rusty I am and how I need to put some practice in before I do the pages. And so we need to get better at being craftsmen for, for the Lord. If we are going to be Christian entertainment, you better do it like you're on fire. This mediocre stuff, halfway doing it, Christian movies where people talk in a car for 20 minutes and the camera stays in one spot and you look at stuff from Hollywood and the camera shows the outside shot of the car and maybe there's a street lamp on and it's dark and there's a rabbit hopping in the yard next door and it goes in on the, the people in the car and then it shows it over one guy's shoulder and it shows it over the other guy's shoulder and then it shows both guys in the shot and goes back and forth. Maybe you hear some sirens or something else, some kids walking down the sidewalk, show them. But the Christian film just has a camera in one spot and they talk for 20 minutes, you fall asleep. Like, let's start looking at our comic books and what are we doing wrong in our music? What are we doing in a lazy way? What are we doing that we could become better craftsmen at what we're doing? To, to hone in on our talents and skills that God gave us to glorify Him. We're not going to get anybody's attention if we do it in a lazy way. Imagine if your pastor showed up to church and decided that he was going to do a lazy sermon. Put you all to sleep. Would you keep going to that church? Don't do it with your entertainment. If you want to get people's attention, you want to show some good creativity... You need to practice your stuff. If you're doing a comic book, practice your anatomy. I, my hands on my cartoon characters suck. I'm still working on that. I need to get the hand. I know my product. It's like, okay, I can't screw around and look, make this look dumb. I got to practice hands. Facial expression. Get down the anatomy. My characters, they don't have legs and they don't have arms. And I don't know why they look like little... Veggie tail characters, and I don't want that, so I'm trying to change it. I'm working on it. Let's make it better. Make it look professional. Because God is is pumping a story through me that I feel like if I don't put in too much of me in it, it's worthy of Jesus. If I don't start messing it up, God gave me a story to tell. Now I need to market it. And I need to craft it correctly for the Lord. And some of this stuff I'm saying on this video right now, not to preach at you, but I'm preaching at me. I need to make sure that I'm staying focused on that. And I'll tell you something. You need to keep the armor of God going. You need to make sure you're praying every day and you're staying in the Word. If you're working on Christian entertainment... Especially, I had a day the other day, last week. Man, it was 
It was, I, I completed three full pages, and for me, that's a big deal. I'm walking into a project that's going to be 600 or more pages, and it's going to be intense, and I need to do it. And I don't care if it takes me 10, 20 years. I need to just sit down and do this and get it done and so that it's out there for people to look at because God called me to do it. And I did three full pages. And this was um, a piece in my Ashcan comic that's called Relationship. And it's clunky and it's hard for me to look at, but I was just trying to get down a style, maybe try some ink washes and watercolor and you know, put, you know, this little piece of, you know, the Trinity having a conversation. Just thought it'd be fun to play with that idea. And it it's not meant to be this great work of art that gets everybody's attention and pulls them in. Its purpose was served was to get me started, to have me complete something, beginning, middle, and end. I got three pages, stories done. It's clunky. The writing's clunky and hard to to digest. Um, the artwork's kind of all over the map, but I did it. That was like a huge victory. I completed a comic book, you know, in a way, like a, a story. And the reason that's a big victory is since the 80s, I've been telling everybody I'm a comic book artist. I've never completed a comic book. So how can you say you're a comic book artist if you've never finished anything? So this was a big deal for me. I finished something. It was for God, and I was like, I was learning from it. I wanted it finished, not perfect. I, I wanted something that wasn't going to be awesome. I just wanted it completed. I wanted it finished. And then I could learn from that and do the next piece. And that was the whole point of it. And I felt such victory in getting it done. And once I got it done, the next day, I found myself falling into my default setting and just being, having the darkest thoughts and lustful thoughts and all of this weird stuff happening to me. And I didn't go right into prayer in my Bible like I would normally do with my day. I completed this thing for God, and I feel like it got the devil's attention. He's going to follow through on something. And so I felt like I got heavily attacked. I just felt like a different person all day. And then I felt shame about it. I felt horrible about it. And... So I urge you, if you're going to be a creative Christian that's working on Christian entertainment and to glorify God, and this applies to everything, but if you're doing something for God, you know, you have to pay special attention that it could all be taken away and diminished. Your name could be tarnished. Nobody will pay attention to you. Because you completed it, you did your thing, and then the demons just seeped in to attack. There's a spiritual war going on all around us, always. And when you're standing up for Christ, it gets the devil's attention. If he don't like that, he don't want it. He don't want you influencing others. He's doing his work, and you're interfering with it. So I highly suggest... Every day you stay in your Bible, you stay in prayer. And uh, so the beginning of all of this was just to kind of state, you know, where I just, I, I really wanted to talk about, like, how blessed I am to have this project and where it's going. I, I feel like I've written pieces of it now and put pieces of it together that still in storyboard form and a lot of it's just, you know, plans for the future to do these things. It's all written down in a notebook. It's all saved on a hard drive. And it's my projects that I'm going to be doing. But I feel like God gave me something that's going to hold my attention. 
I've got my action story right up front that's going to be at least eight issues, I'm thinking. And that's, you know, all my main characters and all the things I've been dreaming up for the last ten years, sitting in Bible studies and church and just taking notes when I'm, I'm there. And there was like 400 pages or so of notes the last ten years that I had to sort through and outline and put plunk it into my script and what am I going to keep what works what doesn't work and go from there and start storyboarding because I wanted a story that was solid beginning middle and end turned out to be eight eight issues so that's my graphic novel right there too if you want to look at it that way then God gave me some other things that I'm passionate about I love I love history to an extent and and trying to document people that are worthy. Like, um, I enjoy reading about people like that have influenced the church. And so I wanted to put something like that together. I love music. And I've always had this thought and fear that, you know, someday some of this music is going to get lost in time. You know, and this was when I was in the 80s. I was telling you that. I was into heavy metal and all that stuff, and I would always worry, because I listened to some junky bands at one point, and I had this fear that these bands would disappear and nobody would ever know them, the history is erased, and you know what, that's going to happen anyways, <laughs> I hate to say it, um, but God's going to, you know, take away all the works that weren't godly, and all this work that we do on this earth. Unless it's for Christ and salvation, it's all for nothing. So, I used to worry about music disappearing and old TV shows, things I really liked. How how are we going to archive and save it forever? And you get frantic about this. It's your idol. It's your worshiping this thing that you're trying to keep alive that inevitably is going to disappear. And so... <clears throat> Just uh, with with that being said, I'm I'm really into the, the music aspect, and so I started thinking about some old Christian hymns, and and we've got this hymnal book downstairs, and it's like, wow, this is really rich. And I I don't dislike the modern Christian music at all. I, I'm really into a lot of it. I like I like that stuff. Um, but the old hymns that we used to just sing in church and they were in books and you'd sing them in church. And my grandma knew them and she knew them on piano and organ. Um, they're special. Uh, they're based on scripture. I mean, they tell scripture and it's just like the, the pages of scripture come alive in, in the music. And so these old hymnals, I just thought they're, they're so special and important. I need to, document them even though it's in a comic book i thought whoa what if i and this is where i'm stealing from the devil again where i'm stealing from the world where there was comic books that i collected in the past there was there was one from tori amos it was a big book and i used to be into her music a lot and she put out this big thick comic book like graphic novel thing and had all these different artists do her songs, not every song that, she, that was in her catalog, but they did a lot of her music and illustrated her songs and made up little stories to go with the songs. And, you know, not all of them followed every lyric. You know, it kind of went off on tangents, but it kind of had the spirit of the song in it. And then there was a band called Megadeth, and they put out a series of comic books that was going through their their um catalog of music also and just lyric lyrically like every word of the song was in the comic and then the comic would tell us a visual story to go with the lyrics so i was getting these ideas and i'm like why don't i steal that for god and put that back into some hymns and like just and then the old rugged cross came up and i was like that's a really good song and what if I told it from the point of view? And this, at this time of recording this, this is just my ideas I put down. I haven't done any of this yet. 
but I want to complete the old rugged cross. I want to um, <clears throat> illustrate it from the point of view of the thief that was on the cross next to Jesus. And like his journey to the cross. And then he sees the Messiah there and, you know, gets to go to heaven that day after everything he did. And so I, I wanted, I was like, what if I told it from his point of view? And try to just kind of make up a story that will touch people and make you think deeper about the song and Christ and salvation. And I thought, man, if I could do that. And it's little things like this where I didn't want to have the boundaries of a Spider-Man comic. I didn't want to have the boundaries of a Calvin and Hobbes strip. You know, and those things are beautiful and awesome in their own respects. But I wanted the ability to play outside the box. And and I feel like God is just... The more I was getting frustrated with my stuff and what I was coming up with, and I had this rigid story idea where it's going to be stories about Jesus, and then I'll backtrack and I'll put in stories about my characters and how they did it wrong, Jesus did it right. And I was getting frustrated with all of it, and the more I prayed and worked on it, and just I was being faithful to, you know, God wants me to do this, I'm going to do it. And God started to make it exciting. And God started to make it fun and open up my mind to, well, you know what? What are the things you like? And how can we make this interesting and fun and exciting? And keep, keep your interest in it. And some of it was just being able to play like that, to take songs and make... And... and Another thing I really love is when they mash up songs. It blows my mind because I'm not a music guy, so I don't know how that works. But when they can take two songs that are from different bands and mash them together and it fits, like it was part of the same song, it was written together, it was meant to be, that kind of is intriguing to me. And so <clears throat> I had an idea of doing some mashup songs and for some reason, and I don't know if it still fits or not, I have to go back and look, but, and it might not be in the comic, but I really want to play with the idea of um, Silent Night and Little Drummer Boy started to flow into like this rhythm that when it was in my head, I was singing all the lyrics and I was writing them down. I was kind of playing around with <clears throat> the structure of it. And some of the main verses, like having the Silent Night main verse, and then go like a line from it, and then the Little Drummer Boy line, and how it was all starting to fit. And it was creating a scene that had more dimension to it. Because Silent Night is like this beautiful story of looking down on the nativity scene. And then the Little Drummer Boy song is like from this little boy's point of view, and he's right there watching it. I thought, you know, this is giving, like, like the example I said with making movies and how the Christian movie I was checking out one time, they were filming two guys talking in a car and how boring it got because it was just right on them. But to give different perspectives and go bouncing back and forth. And, and in this song, to bounce, like, from looking at the whole scene in Silent Night to the little drummer boy and looking at his perspective and then bounce back at the bigger picture and then bounce back to the little boy and just to give it a different flavor. I don't know. I just uh, wanted to record a lot of these thoughts because I feel like God's starting to flesh something out and I probably recorded this before. I repeat myself a lot, but I want to create a lot of content to go with these books when they're finished and so I'm kind of archiving all of these things that I'm talking about so I'm keeping my thoughts recorded so I can release them with the issues um, so I just want to make sure that I don't know maybe if anything else if I could spark somebody else's creativity inspire somebody else that didn't think about these things and think this way that they they can take down the boundaries and do something for Christ. And if I can 
with my books that I'm going to create, if I can reach that one lost person, I feel like that's a huge thing. If I just reach one with all the work I'm going to put into this. And the secondly is if I can inspire somebody who's creative to maybe be better than me and be the next big thing and kind of springboard off of where I started. If you can make it better, do it, go. And maybe inspire others to be creative and be better. And I guess that's, that's my spiel for today. That's all I got. Dishes are done.